What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is part 13 of my reviewing and ranking Yes's live albums, most of which I were not familiar with prior to starting this, which is why I'm doing this, just to check them out. Um, and we're on number 13, and this one could not come at a better time because the one that I just did in the previous video was by far my least favorite so far. Uh, no Anderson, uh, uh, not the first one without Anderson, but the worst one without Anderson. Just performances I thought were weak. It was the first time I was like, yeah, maybe they should have hung it up at this point. But then we get this release. This is the release that followed that, though not performance-wise chronologically, but release-wise, because this is Progeny, seven shows from 72, and this is seven complete shows from 1972. Um, the set lists are almost identical, and one of them, two songs are flipped. Uh, How would sometimes flip the order of the clap and mood for a day. Other than that, you get the exact same set list for all of them. Um, I'm not going to rank all, what is it, how many songs are there? All uh, 63 performances of the songs. Uh, that would pretty much just be the list I'm going to do uh, times seven in each if that makes sense. Uh, but there is a highlights disc. And the highlights disc has all of the songs that are on each of the shows. It's just a different performance from each show. Um, these shows are, for the most part, the same source material they used for uh, Yes songs, uh, their very first release. Um, and yeah, that's that has been thus far my favorite release. And so now we just essentially get that times seven, minus a couple songs that were played on a, on a, a different tour, an earlier tour. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a fantastic release. Even though it's seven identical shows, um, I think it really shows how strong the band is. There's definitely, they're definitely playing prog rock, but there's a rock club looseness to them. And you can just feel like a little more just that raw energy of the band comes through really well. Um, obviously, I, I, I can't say that it's for the casual fan because it's a 14-disc box set with seven identical shows, uh, but the highlights disc is really good, and they did a pretty good job of picking the highlights. Nine songs. I'm just going to talk about the nine songs in the order from my least favorite to my favorite. Um, the whole performance is fantastic. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's, that's all that's going to happen right here. Um, so anyways, uh, what do we got on here? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'll put the list up at the screen, um, of the songs in order when I'm done. Then I will rank this album among the other 12 that I've done so far. And then the question is, did any of these songs make my overall favorite performance list? I have a list of trying to put my 10 favorite performances from this. Um, will any of these 10 make it? Um, any of these songs make it? Who knows? We'll put that up list at the end too. A lot of lists. All right, here we go. Um, nine songs on this, on this, in each of the shows on the, uh, on the, uh, I can't even remember what it was called now. On the, 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 the little short release. What was it called? Um, highlights. Yeah, the highlights release. Uh, number nine is excerpts from Henry VIII. This is the uh, Wakeman solo thing. Um, this has been released before. Um, it's just my least interesting thing on here not interested in an extended keyboard solo uh, not in the context of this uh still enjoyable in the context of the show comes towards the end uh but number nine uh, number eight is roundabout a uh, great live song it's just they generally just play it pretty straightforward um um you get the whole song you don't they're not skipping the middle part as they would in other tours uh but it's roundabout i mean they do a good job they bring the energy like none of these are bad they just you have to rank them somehow uh, number seven, the clap into mood for a day. Um, that's what's on the highlights release. There are versions where it's mood for a day into the clap. Um, yeah, great performances. Hal sounds great. This is early on when he's definitely still fresh and into both these songs. They're not in any way starting to sound tired as they did on a more recent release. Um, really good, solid performances, but pretty much exactly what you'd expect from the clap mood for a day. Um, and you and I is six. It's got that big swell in the beginning before they go into the song. Not the really quiet opening from the album, but they start with that big dun, dun, big operatic, huge symphonic swell before they go into the song. Um, and the the teacher preacher part of, the, of this live, no matter which version of the band is performing, it always has a little bit more spice and funk and a little bit more 
kind of cool. Um, but that would be number five. Um, uh, number number six. Uh, number five is your move, all good people. Uh, this one will always get points for not having the cold break between your move and all good people, but the awesome drum roll into the ending jam, which sounds absolutely spectacular. Um, number four, close to the edge. Uh, this pr pretty much pretty true to the studio version. How's solos in the beginning? He's he's messing around. There's a little improv there. He's doing different things, so that's always pretty cool. The fact that they pull this song off and they manage to maintain like the energy and the suspense and the emotion and the drive for like 20 minutes is absolutely fantastic. But all of those I think are kind of pretty true to the studio. It's the next three when we're starting to get a little bit more extra. Uh, number three is Heart of the Sunrise, and that's pretty much there for the beginning, for the how part, um, not the how part, for the squire part, his little bass solo and that build up into between like the opening da -da 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 -da, and the, and the you know, that middle bass section before they build back into that and do it three times. <clears throat> and again, this just sounds live. The, the fact that they're able to pull this off and all the weird different parts and you, obviously you don't get the like, panning that they get in the studio version but it still sounds really trippy and really just so incredibly well performed every member of the band sounds fantastic um number two is siberian katru <clears throat> you get that awesome lead in from the firebird suite they drop into the dun, 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 dun. just the energy is so incredibly great and that end solo and how just gets to go off and the band just kind of jams out for a while at the end <clears throat> absolutely what puts this at number two and number one, if I was going to do every single song in this box set and rank them, the top seven would be all of the Yours Is No Disgraces. Starts off with this little jam where they're just kind of playing and jamming around. <clears throat> this was their encore number. Um, there are versions where, like, you can tell Hal's not back on stage or there's no guitar. I think there's a version where maybe there's no bass or something's missing there's one where anderson's starting to get the crowd to sing along like each of the versions is slightly a little bit different and then they they drop into the dun 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 this one has several sort of false fronts and where wakeman does a piano slide and it sounds like they're gonna he's gonna run down the piano and they're gonna be dun 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 uh, but that happens a couple times before they finally like go with him and drop into the song and then in the middle of this, how just gets an extended chance to like jam out. And then the band comes in and they jam with him and the Squire White How interactions in this are fantastic. And they build that energy back up to finish off the song. Just absolutely ridiculous. Just absolutely amazing. The Yours is No Disgraces on, on this entire box set. Kind of is the reason it's all worth it is to have like, uh, they almost need a release where it's just the seven Yours is No Disgraces because they're all so fantastic. But yeah, really, really good release. That's what the songs all look like in the order that I would rank them based on what they bring live, not what the songs are themselves, but what they're bringing. It's different live. Uh, according to the studio version, I would put them in that order, even though we don't have a studio. Yeah, we do. Um, so for all those, and then you bump all the way up to where would I rank this? I have this at number three. Um, it doesn't beat Yes Songs because Yes Songs has songs from another tour, A Perpetual Change and um, uh, Long Distance Run Around the Fish that are fantastic, absolutely amazing, just phenomenal. Um, so that bumps Yes Songs up to one. Plus the word goes throughout their entire, almost their entire career. So I like the, the, the span that that is. So I would put that, but then Progeny. Number three, even though there's a lot of repetition, uh, whether it's the highlights disc or the seven box set, Progeny goes at number three. Question is, would any of these songs on the highlights disc, I'm going to go with the highlights disc only, uh, make my top 10. And there's my top 10 performances so far in the Yes Live series. And uh, yours is no disgrace is on there twice. It's the one that's on Progeny, which is the full one, no edits. And then the one that's on Yes Songs, which is still pretty good. That version is also on Progeny, uh, the, incre the complete box set. But they're both so good and the jam is so different and the energy is just, uh, they have them both up there. Um, they're both up there uh, in the top 10. And I, I don't think anything else from here would bump this off. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sticking with that for now. That, that's, that's what my list looks like. But yeah, anyways, that's all I got. Uh, Progeny, it's a great release. 
Um, I I really enjoyed the the massive box set because I like revisiting the different shows and the performances are the same, obviously, and the band is you know locked in. They're not making huge mistakes, but there is a kind of a different vibe for each one. And the more you listen to them, the more you're starting to pick up on that vibe. Um, but the highlights disc is completely worth the money, I think, and it's absolutely fantastic. And they did a good job of picking what highlights they did. <clears throat> so I like this release. Good release. It was well needed because the one that I just did, like it is, yes, of the Bristol Hippodrome, number 13 on my list, uh, was not very good at all. My least favorite so far. But anyways, that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts on yes, on this album, all that kind of stuff. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and go listen to this single release, man, if you haven't. Some good stuff. Live 72, yes. Fantastic. All right, peace. Talk to you later.